Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Mass. Here we have Max on lands versus Mark the Goblin King. He has made yet another top eight. And yes, he is playing goblins, of course. But he's got a lot to contend with here as both Exploration and Mox Diamond, along with a Rashad and Port, have accelerated Max's game plan here. He's going to be able to use that Rashad and Port to stifle Mark's plans. Wasteland. Plays right into the life from the loam. And Max actually just going to loam back the port. Play a thespian stage. And this wasteland is fired off. Now there's no basic land on board. One of the more savage tricks you can do with thespian stage is target a basic land in response to a wasteland activation. And that will actually effectively counter it as it's no longer a non-basic on resolution. Uh, Life from the Loam is just going to end up recurring. Goblin Lackey on the other side. Now two Thespian stages coming down. And the last card is a Punishing Fire. That is terrible news for Mark. Goblins hate punishing fire it burns them and now aether vial gives him a little bit of uh, potential to play around this punishing fire potentially get a decent little army going without it all just being shot down one at a time but life from alone marches on digging trying to find The Dark Depths. And all sorts of tapping going on here with Rashad and Ports. Eventually this Life from Alone will reveal a Dark Depths and then it will be over pretty quickly. This is exactly how you draw it up. Life from the Loam being dredged back and cast each turn. End of turn, Skirk Prospector. Max with so much life. But he's going to opt to take out this Skirk Prospector during the end step. Hopping down Mark's mana base. He may have some type of responses here. Munitions expert, cycling gem palm incinerator. Does he have any response? No, he does not. Vile continues to tick up. Goblins is one of those lists that really, really punishes or, or has a lot of game uh, versus a lot of the fairer decks, things like uh, Death and Taxes. Uh, you can really have some very fun interactive games uh, there. Uh, blue control strategies often you can exploit certain weaknesses there, but lands, I mean, your primary constraint is going after their mana base, and as you see here, Max's mana base is just sprawling across the table. There's really not much, uh, even a, a couple of Wastelands or Rashadden ports on Mark's side of the board would do at all to stop this, with the constant two lands being made per turn, thanks to Life from Malone constantly recurring. I'm a little surprised to see the sheltered thicket on the battlefield I would think it'd be more valuable as a card to be cycled but uh, Max may be just looking to increase his land count for uh, land of the dead the field of the dead yeah field of the dead the uh, core 20 card it just makes a ton of zombies that may end up being a path to victory as well
tabernacle just another obstacle here. If Max needs to, he can always get rid of it with the wasteland. End of turn, goblin matron. Grabbing sling gang lieutenant. Doesn't feel like there's going to be enough range here. Cavern of Souls is a very short life expectancy here thanks to Wasteland. And Max can also uh, Punishing Fire this Sling Gang Lieutenant in response to his Enter the Battlefield ability. So his ETB is putting goblins into the battlefield, which you can then sling at your opponent, creating a life loss. Violing up and tapping down. And another Cavern of Souls. Mark uh, does have a bunch of basic mountains in there. Uh, just not seeing them. Instead, just a lot more caverns. A couple of Wasteland, Rashadenport, along with a couple of goblins. We got Lackey and Fanatic. And Punishing Fire going to clear that ringleader out of the way. Goblin Lackey put into the battlefield. Really barely an inconvenience. And there we see Field of the Dead. That'll likely be enough there. Though he will have to be mindful of his own tabernacle. Going to be able to create two zombies each turn thanks to exploration. And Mark has seen enough. Going to hope for more balanced game, game two, or perhaps a completely unbalanced game. Maybe he can run away with it with a turn one goblin lackey into just mog shenanigans. Actually, not sure about Mark's feelings on the word Mog, or if he just prefers goblins. That playmat that he's got from uh, Popper Open that he won playing goblins. I believe he actually bested me in the finals of that one. Our popper opens one of the few times that I actually get to play in an open series event. They're usually pretty big. Um, our team trio opens have mostly sold out. Um, actually, I think, yeah, all but the last one. The last one was right at the beginning of uh, people starting to understand the corona situation as social distancing started to become a concept. The standard legacy opens draw, I would say typically in the 20s, uh, low 30s. Uh, very, very happy with the amount of support that we've had in this first year. Uh, just past the one year anniversary with the shop. And we are taking this time to get the online setup going as, as well as in store improvements as we are shut down. Goblin Lackey, a great opening here for Mark. The Goblin King going to look to have an explosive start against Max. Max is going to need some way of controlling 
the board or just straight up outracing it. Of course, the other side of trying to outrace it is goblins can be pretty tricky. They may end up having some shenanigans. Ooh, drop of honey. <coughs> Excuse me. The beginning of Max's turn. And it looks like Mark going to swing. Let's see what he puts in. Mog War Marshal would be great. Like, so great. Looks like a, not a Goblin Trash Master. Aether Vial. Blast Zone into Sylvan Library. This Goblin Trash Master going to get in damage while he can. This Drop of Honey will either continue to do damage or will eventually go away. Pithing Needle can name Blast Zone. I believe, or Sylvan Library. I think Sylvan Library is... Got a activated ability of paying zero now. It's been printed different ways throughout the year. Uh, throughout the years. Uh, Sylvan Library is resolving its ability. I'm going to assume that's actually correct. I'm pretty sure it is. And the Blast Zone, anyways, uh, is almost certainly what Pithing Needle would name there, just keeping that Aether Vial alive. Oh, no, Sylvan Library is actually a trigger. Okay. So, good to know. Keep that in mind. Uh, there were some printings where it was written as a zero uh, ability. What on earth was that Pithing Needle naming? Oh, I hope it wasn't actually naming Sylvan, and then he found out that it's actually a trigger, not a activated ability. That would be graphic. As we're doing these videos, I think I've got to get a whiteboard or something together so people can write down what they're naming with cards. I'll get that improvement done for the next time we're open for organized play. If you're a fan of the channel and within a uh, reasonable distance, hopefully you'll be able to join us at some point now that we're open. I know I'll be super grateful to get back to a nice full house, great competition and camaraderie. I think hopefully everybody's going to be uh, even more appreciative of just the incredible community that we have. Dark Depths now coming down. Mark no wasteland and then crop rotation during the end step. This is going to do it. Able to make a 2020 and close it out relatively quick. Drop of Honey buying plenty of time early and perhaps earning that price tag. That is a super pricey card that a lot of players are not actually sleeving up due to strictly budgetary reasons. But that game certainly showing why it can be in the list. That is all for this one, but don't worry. There is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.